Hello and welcome to the Arkansas Division of Land Surveys. My name is Daniel Phillips. I am the Arkansas State Surveyor. So on this video I'm going to show everyone how to uh, develop a corner certificate. So this is, uh, I've just made a couple other videos that kind of covers uh, project planning for uh, finding a, a GLO section corner or mile post and then I did a video on uh, the field restoration work required uh, on site and now I'm going to cover uh, developing a corner certificate and we're going to use the information that we uh, acquired on the uh, field visit to complete the corner certificate so what I've done here <clears throat> is I've got our field sketch that we put together on site just to kind of keep everything on track and these are all the photos I took of the corner accessories bearing tree signs location tag monument monument setting photos so we need to get the corner certificate and that is located on the Division of Land Surveys website under resources scroll down a little bit and you'll see 2021 corner certificate so click on that click download and find the folder you want it in and there's my folder hit save and I'll go ahead and open that okay so I'll just start filling this out we'll look at page one to begin with and then we'll move on to uh, doing the sketch so this is pretty easy just this is Sevier County let me find my section township and range okay so I'll go back to the surveyor map to find this information so we're working with milepost 90 so it's not exactly a section corner but it does abut a section so that's section 11 township 8 south range 33 west okay back to the corner certificate section 11 township 08 south range 33 west corner you would typically put south quarter east quarter northwest southwest something like that if it was a standard section in this case it's a mile post so we're going to put MP 90 chalk for Choctaw and GCDB number uh, this would typically be 300, 300, 400, 300. It's a six digit number typically for a standard section. Uh, just for a quick reference sake on this, we're going to call this uh, 90 for milepost 90. Accuracy, this is this is going to be how about how precise your estimate for how precise the coordinates are. In this case, we had very good, um, we had a pretty good fix. Uh, we had some canopy. We did some redundant shots, and we got a maximum spread on our points of, of maybe uh, two-tenths of a foot. And just to kind of add in a little little buffer, uh, we'll, we'll rate this one at, give it an estimated accuracy of 0.5 feet. So, latitude and longitude. 
I have not converted this yet, but we'll we'll do that real quick. So I need my um, northing and easting. So we'll go here, and now my northing and easting are displayed on the left. So let's go to NGS NCAT. coordinate converter so we want to convert from Arkansas State Plains South to latitude longitude so here we would change this to SPC so we're going to enter state plane coordinates change the units to US survey feet and then populate the northing and easting come over here and grab my northing I'm just gonna copy that And then go back and copy my easting. Okay, US survey feet, zone, AR south, output zone. We'll don't have to fill that out actually. Uh, just hit submit and look at this map and make sure. Just as a quick check, if you get something really wrong up here, it's going to not be in your location. So that that helps us out, and we can see we've got a good point there. All right, latitude and longitude. So here is latitude, degrees, minutes, seconds. We're going to copy that. Go back to the latitude, longitude. Okay. Okay, latitude is 34 degrees, 05 minutes, 10.191 seconds, comma, negative. We'll come over here and look at longitude. So it's the westing longitude. The east, the east longitude is in a normal degrees, minute, second format. The west longitude is not. So that's 94 degrees, 28 minutes, 23.360 seconds. So that's what we're going to enter. 94 degrees, 28 minutes, 23.360 seconds, and there it is. Next, enter the surveyor name. Surveyor license number, survey date. Now the survey date is going to be the date of the field work. So that was January 24th, 2022. That's yesterday. So 01 24 2022. Previous certificate on file, there was not. So type no. Type uh, NA. Horizontal datum is the standard NAT 83, 2011. Position determined by, so GNSS. Uh, put the model of the receiver Geomax Xena 35 Pro uh, using R dot 
real time network. Okay. Description of original and perpetuating surveys. So this is this is where it takes a little time to assemble this information. So I've got what we're going to start with, and that's the 1858 Jones and Brown survey. So we're looking for milepost 90, 90th mile, 87, 89, 90. Okay, there we go. Okay, it says Conway's 89th mile identified by me, Old Bearing Tree, Pine, South 88 West, 44 degrees. Okay, um, 80 chains, 90th mile, set post oak, uh, 6 inch diameter, 8 feet long, from which bears. Black Oak, 57, South 57 West, 20 links, so on and so on. So I'm going to type, in, type this in to the corner certificate information, and I'll abbreviate where, where possible um, so we don't completely fill up that section. So I'm going to do that right now. And... Okay, so I'm kind of looking at it off screen here. Eighteen fifty eight Jones and Brown. Ninetieth mile. They wrote MP set post oak. I can't read the next word, so six inch diameter. Eight feet long from which bears a black oak south fifty seven west twenty links eighteen inch diameter. We'll shorten that up a little bit. Okay. And they also write made mound of stone per instructions. Now we're going to jump ahead to the next record survey. And that's the 1877 Henry McKee survey. So I'm going to have to go find that. And that is uh, at surveyor.arkansas.gov resources. Go down to 1877 McKee Choctaw Line Survey mile 85 to Red River. So that's going to give us what we need. Okay. So that's 93rd mile. I'm looking at the top of the page. Uh, 92nd, 91st, 90th mile. Okay. 
So what we're looking for is right here. So it says to a point 17 links west of Old Stone Mound. So they found the stone mound. Their stake point was a little bit off. So they adjusted from which a dead black oak 18 inch diameter bears south 70 west 20 links. Post oak 12 inch diameter bears uh, north 80 degrees east 64 links. They set an iron post in the old stone mound per instructions. And then they have the uh, bearing trees, newly established bearing trees from that time, uh, which we did not find on site. Seven inch pine and another seven inch pine. So I'm going to type this in and abbreviate where I can over here. So in 1877, this was described as a set iron post in the old stone mound, and I'm going to abbreviate here, from which a pine seven inches diameter bears north 88.5 degrees east 29 links and another pine 7 inch Diameter bears north eighty point five degrees west forty four links. Okay, so that uh, takes care of the eighteen fifty eight notes and the eighteen. 77 notes. You'll also want to look at the Bureau of Land Management website and see if there's anything else uh, that's relevant that ties to this corner. Also look at the uh, Arkansas's uh, corner database if there's a certificate that also uh, ties to it or uh, there's a certificate already done on it you will want to reference that certificate, uh, reference that information. Also, if there's a, a plat that is filed that ties to this corner, you'll want to reference the plat uh, book and page number if it's a county filed plat or if it's filed in the state uh, database. Uh, just put uh, state document number uh, so and so uh, so it can uh, be found. So that's all I'm going to put for the description of original and perpetuating surveys. Now I'm going to move on to description <coughs> of evidence found. So what we found was the stone mound that was described in the 1877 notes and the 1858 notes. And we also found a 60 D nail that was set in the center of that mound to to represent the center of the mound. So I would write that as found old stone mound as described in 1858 and 1877 notes. with I would also say eighteen seventy seven iron post 
was missing 60D nail existing 60D nail in center of mound. So since there's not any uh, accessory trees, witness trees remaining, I'll stop there. Uh, typically you would go into describing uh, which accessory trees you found and at what distance and uh, in what size. Okay, now I want to describe the monument uh, and accessories established to perpetuate the corner location. So I'm going to pull up two screens here. We'll look at the field sketch that Steve created on site. Kind of put those side by side. Okay. I'll just uh, start at the top and work myself around clockwise um, and also we'll start off by describing the set monument. So we left stone mound in place and set a 30 inch A to BR that's the type of monument that's a, a pipe and a cap with a breakaway base so we'll describe that Aluminum pipe and cap with break away base. In center of mound. <clears throat> Set existing sixty D nail <clears throat> next to aluminum pipe, or let's say next to <clears throat> new monument. Established the following new accessories. And we'll number these. <clears throat> so number one, I want that to be my five inch elm. Bears north, uh, 22 degrees east. We'll separate that out a little bit. 17.3 feet. Number two, we'll go down to the southeast quadrant to the four inch post oak. Bears south, 26 degrees, 
east, 13.5 feet. Number three, 11 inch pine bears south, 17 degrees, 30 minutes, west, 38.8 feet. Number four, go back up to the northwest quadrant, four inch elm, bears north, 55 degrees, 30 minutes west, 15.7 feet. <clears throat> then we'll swing back around to the twin post oak. That's number five. 14 inch twin post oak. North, 12 degrees. 30 minutes east, 5.0 feet. <clears throat> we also want to mention that this has a BT tag. Location tag on the, actually that has a bearing tag. Pine tree has bearing tag. Four inch elm bearing tag. Twin post oak has do not disturb sign and location tag. We also want to mention that all all bearing trees are banded blazed and scribed with nail set 90 degrees to monument. Okay. Let's save that. Now we're going to move into the sketch. So let's close, well, let's keep that open for a minute. So there's a few different ways you can do the sketch. <clears throat> if you're good at hand drawing them, uh, if it looks, um, sometimes uh, Steve is, is very good at hand drawing these. These can be scanned and inserted <clears throat> directly into the uh, sketch page. Uh, if you're good enough to sketch it neatly on site and you can scan it and have all the information very legible and then place that on the sketch page that could save you a lot of time you don't have to go through and redraw everything uh, you can also if you have a PDF editing PDF editing software you can draw the sketch uh, doesn't have to be to scale and draw it on the sketch page. Or you can uh, key in the bearings and distances in a CAD program uh, like a typical survey plat and insert that into your uh, corner certificate document. And um, that's what I'm going to do just kind of as a demonstration, as an example. I'll go ahead and go through and, and uh, draw it in Carlson survey and then insert that in into the certificate 
So I've got the field sketch set up side by side with my CAD project. I've got the uh, milepost 90 actual point already entered in state plane coordinates. So I want to draw in all of these accessory trees. So I'm going to do that to scale with the real bearings and distances. So I'm just going to start at the top here, 5 inch elm, north 22 degrees east. So we'll do a line command, start line, angle, angle of line, north 22 degrees. And by the way, to do the degrees symbol uh, in Word or in CAD or something like that, it's Alt-0176. So press down the Alt key on your left side and type in 0176. Okay, so that's north 22 east. Length of line is 17.3 feet. And I'm looking right here. So length of line. 17.3 feet and that's it I'll start a new line and again angle angle of line <clears throat> this time I'm looking at the 4 inch post oak south 26 degrees east angle south 26 degrees east 13.5 five feet okay repeat that command angle now I'm looking at the 11 inch pine tree in the southwest quadrant that's gonna be south 17 degrees 30 minutes west 38.8 feet okay repeat the command for the 4 inch elm in the northwest quadrant angle north 55 degrees 30 minutes west 15.8 seven feet okay one more now I'm looking at the 14 inch twin post oak angle north 12 degrees 30 minutes east five feet and that's it so now we've got the locations for all of the bearing trees. And I'm going to take this point out since we have our corner location just to kind of clean this up a bit. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to make it go away. Put it on the hidden layer. Okay, so now we want the symbols for these trees. In this program, it's draw, symbols, insert symbols and then find the tree s selections so I want to find something that's appro appropriate for an elm I would I'm gonna go with this one symbol scale 4 let's try that yeah that's the right size okay so I'm just gonna copy this symbol copy I'm going to move that to my twin post oak, my other elm, four inch post oak. And this one's a pine tree, so we want a, a different symbol for that. Go ahead and repeat command. Point symbol, select, and then we're, I'm going to use this tree number two. <clears throat> Same symbol scale. And there it is. 
Now I want a symbol for the monument. We'll do something kind of simple and easy. I'm just going to pick a just a filled in circle. Same symbol scale. That's it. Now I want to get rid of these lines since I, I was just using those to uh, plot the positions of my trees. So we'll turn those off. So I, at this point, I uh, probably should have done this earlier too, but uh, I want to put this into a, a layout format just to kind of make sure the text is the right size, symbols are the right size. <clears throat> so we want this on a an 11 or a, by eight and a half by 11 sheet because uh, every page in the corner certificate needs to be eight and a half by 11. So I started setting up a page here, MP90. So I've already got uh, the model space pulled into the um, layout page here and got it kind of lined up a little bit and I got my text size you know to, to where I want it in model space this way I can just copy this te text since I've got the size and the style that I want I'm just gonna bring this down Oop, copy I'm just going to copy those to everywhere I want text. Just like that. And then then I'm going to go in and uh, correct the uh, text. I want to go back to model space since everything's still looking good in paper space. So I'm still going to use this sketch here on the left. So that's a 4 inch elm at north 55 degrees 30 minutes west 15.7 feet. This is my 14 inch twin post, uh, twin post oak, 14 inch twin post oak space or return key and north 12 degrees, 30 minutes east. Okay. And for our monument text, uh, I'll just say set. aluminum pipe and cap. Let's kind of narrow that text box up a little. In old rock mound. Okay. Got one more here. Four inch post oak. South twenty six degrees east thirteen point five feet. Actually, we've got one more here with the pine tree. And this is a 11 inch pine south 17 degrees 30 minutes west. Okay, 
So there's no other features, any kind of cultural features or natural features that, that I want to put in here. Um, typically, you know, if you're on a fence line, you'll want to show that fence or if you're in a road intersection or a sidewalk or there's a phone pedestal or anything like that, uh, uh, corner of a house, uh, something like that, you'll want to show that on the sketch. In this case, it's in the middle of the woods. Uh, it's not on a section line. There's no fence lines. So <clears throat> the only other drawing element I'm going to put in here is the state line because it's on the, the Oklahoma-Arkansas state line. So I'm going to do that real quick. <clears throat> now I've got a sort of an estimate of the state line based on uh, a proportioned uh, record and measured uh, state line bearings. So let's turn that on. And then I'll draw a line on top of that. Okay, now I'll turn that state line layer off. Then I want to match this line to my uh, monument location. So let's snap to actually go ahead and move. Snap to midpoint. and then snap to node. There it is. Let me see how this looks in paper space. That, that looks pretty good. We can, we can change that line to a dashed line or, or something like that if, if you want to. I'm just going to leave it just a, just a solid line. Now I'm going to insert, so the, the, the sketch, you can do it two ways. You can insert, if you have a good photo of the monument cap, that needs to be, that can be inserted into the sketch page. So the idea is we want to see what's on that cap, and uh, it, if you would rather sketch it in the, the sketch page, that's fine too. Uh, but in this case, I have a, a good close-up photo of the monument, uh, and it's e easily legible, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go to my image command to insert an image. And I'm going to attach the image of my monument. And OK. And just lay this in here somewhere and we'll move it move it later. So I'm going to move that somewhere in here. And we're done with the uh, field sketch, so I can maximize this. And it looks pretty good, maybe a little bit smaller. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, diagram here. Most diagrams are just going to be a square with a with a point in the northwest corner, southwest, northeast, southeast, or the south quarter, or something like that. Uh, this is a little bit different. This is a fractional section on a state line. So let's take a look at that on the surveyor map. So there's my section 11. So it's very small, slim, uh, fractional section. And the milepost is about one-sixth of the way from the north line. So we want, want to kind of estimate that here. So I've got my slim fractional section milepost about one-sixth of the way uh, from the north line. Um, so you want to add your section, township, and range above the diagram. Uh, 
put the section number in the section. And just to show this is the state line on this side, I've got Arkansas on one side, Oklahoma on the other. And make sure you have a, a north arrow. Okay, uh, what else do we need? I'm going to go ahead and put a leader line from my monument text to the monument. Let's go ahead and do that and make an arrow, arrow HD, arrow size uh, 2 should be fine, and there we go. Okay. Now I want to insert my um, surveyor seal. So I've got my signature and seal scanned in electronic. So I'm going to insert that as an image. I think I already have it attached. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to add. OK. I'm going to add it to this bottom corner and make it about, let's say about that big. So something else I want to check here is uh, licensure board regulations on uh, surveyor seal is that it should be sized between 1.25 inches and 2 inches. So I want to make sure it's in between those two uh, dimensions. So I'm going to measure that. measure from this corner to this corner. So I'm a little over two inches, so I'm going to shrink that up a little. Measure that again. Okay, that's about 1.9 inches, so that's good. So the next thing I want to do is put the uh, stamp date. And I've got some text here on the uh, paper space uh, part of the project. And this is, by the way, this is just a statement that I've added uh, showing how I got my bearings and my distances to the accessories. Because sometimes you can get your accessory locations with uh, GPS. So that's going to be on uh, State Plain North or State Plain South, most likely. And uh, so you'll want to put the distances and bearings were acquired with um, GPS or, or however you, you did it. In this case, we used uh, a Sunto magnetic compass and a, uh, a tape. So I'm going to leave that statement here. And I'm going to, I like that size and style, so I'm going to bring that over here and type in today's date. Okay. So the survey date, this is going to be different from the survey date. On uh, sketch page number one, you'll need to list your survey date. And that's going to be the date of the field visit, which is also going to be the date on the uh, your witness tree uh, and bearing tree signs. So unless something strange, uh, something unusual, the date on the, the signs should be the survey date and should match what's on sketch page number or certificate page number one. And then the stamp date uh, will typically be a little bit after uh, in this case, it's two days later. Okay, so while I'm still on the sketch page, uh, before I export this into a PDF, I'm going to just make a double check on everything, make sure I've got everything I need. So let's pull up the field sketch again. And 
Okay. So my pine, I need to add the distance. 38.8 feet. Okay, that looks good. Uh, my four inch post oak. It's got everything and looks good. Set aluminum pipe and cap in Old Rock Mound. That looks good. My twin post oak. I need to add the feet. Five, five feet. 5.0 feet. Okay, uh, five inch elm, north 22 east, 17.3 feet. Four inch elm, north 55, 30, west 15.7. That all looks good. I think I've got everything here. Southeast quadrant, southwest quadrant. Um, okay, that looks good. I might just, since so I've got a little space here, I'll just kind of center this up a little better okay all right so this is the uh, sketch page I'm going to use in the certificate so I'm going to this needs to be a PDF so I'm going to export this go ahead and save project so go to plot publish now I want to remove everything except for this layout. Let me go ahead and remove the model space and publish. We'll call this uh, layout. Save. Okay. Now let's go take a look at it. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to insert this into my corner certificate document. So on our corner certificate document, we've still got this blank sketch page. Since we've made a new sketch page, we can completely take this one out since we're not doing any kind of drawing on this. So I'm going to delete that out. Okay, now I'm down to one page, first page of the certificate. I'm going to insert the uh, other, uh, the new sketch page. Insert that after page one. Okay. And there it is. So now we've got two pages. Uh, certificate page number one and the sketch from uh, the Carlson survey drawing. I'm going to save that. Okay, so now we need to work on the photos page. So I'm going to minimize that. And I'm going to do this in Word. There's several ways you can do it. Um, you can print print them out uh, and scan them back in. You know, four pages, uh, four pictures per document, or landscape maybe two pictures per page. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this in Word, so I've got a little more control over it. So I got a new Word document. We'll call this the. Photos page. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. So right now it's a one page document. I want to add several pages because it's going to be probably three, maybe four pages long uh, once the photos are in it. All right. So I want to make sure I get the right uh, photos. So I'm going to add the photo of the 
uh, sign close enough to where you can read uh, what's on the sign. And then a second photo of the uh, bearing tree that the sign is attached to. And then I'll, my last couple of photos will be kind of a setting photo showing um, where the trees are in relation to the monument. So this first photo, this is the 14 inch twin post oak. So I'm going to drag and drop that into my Word document. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to insert my extra pages. Insert blank page, another one, and another one, and another one for good measure. We can easily delete those out later if we don't need them. Okay, so the 14 inch twin post. Oop, went to the wrong page. We'll move that. Okay, so this has the location tag. Now we've got enough room to. set the um, second photo of the twin post. So that's this one. Drag and drop and hopefully that uh, th there it is. Okay. Alright, that looks good. So we'll come down to page two. Now I'm going to be working with the uh, four inch elm. So that's the sign and that's the that's the photo of the tree. I'm going to drag and drop this. There it is. I'll need to shrink that up a little. Bring that to the top of the page. And now drag and drop my photo of the tree. Okay. And the next uh, set of photos I have have at the bottom. This is the. This is the other elm in the northwest quadrant, I believe. I'll double check all these once they're they're in. We'll bring that to the top of the page. And we'll set the second photo of the tree. Okay, that looks good. My next photo is the sign for the four inch post oak. So I'll click up here in my document. Now I will drag and drop this photo. This is an easy one to recognize because it's part of a cluster of trees. There were two uh, elms growing out of almost the same stump. Now I'm going to look for my pine tree. There it is. Pine tree sign. Drop that in. Oop, I think it set it in the wrong location. We'll try that again. I'm going to add a couple more blank pages before I run out. 
Okay. Click in the page. Now I can drag and drop. That should fall in the top of the page. There it is. Click in the page again. Drag and drop. And there it is. So that takes care of all of the accessory trees close up and the photo of the tree. Now I'm going to add, I've got a couple of setting photos. So that's just a photo showing the monument with as many accessories in the background as possible. So this is, this is one photo from the south looking north. It captures the two elms and the twin post oak and the monument. And I have one more photo. This is the same type of photo, but it's capturing the monument and the um, two accessories to the south. So that's good for photos. Now I want to add a, a few labels just to kind of help clarify uh, which, which trees these are. Okay, so now I want to add one more set of labels to the photos page. And then we'll be ready to insert that into the corner certificate. So this is my twin post oak. I'm going to insert text, text box, simple text box. And I'm going to grab the text from, or at least the bearing and distance from, my certificate page number one. Copy and paste. I'll drag this up to. Uh, we'll put it between the two here since this both photos represent the same uh, bearing tree. I'm going to change that text size I think 16 will be good okay go ahead and copy this Now we're at the um, elm, and I'll type in <clears throat> actually copy and paste. Set it between the two. Copy that. This is my four inch elm. This is my four inch post oak. I'll copy this information. Now my 11 inch pine. All 
Okay, I want to add labels to this also. So I'll copy this. Now these might need to be a little smaller so everything fits. Okay, that's my four inch elm. Alright, I want to be able to move this a little further up the page. Okay, 14 inch twin post. That looks good. I'm going to copy this. Now I might need to put an arrow in here. So that's my 5 inch elm. Bears northeast 17.3. Maximize this real quick. Um, I'm going to insert an arrow. I'll change the color and change the line weight. Okay, I'll go ahead and pull that back down. All that looks good. Now I want to label my 4 inch post oak and 11 inch pine. So I'm going to come grab this text. and then copy this text. Okay, we'll do that one more time. For the four inch post oak, actually I'll bring that down here. And I want an arrow on this, so I'll just copy this one. Okay. Actually, I need to copy this one more time and identify my 
14 inch twin post oak. Okay, that's it, save. Now I want to get rid of this extra page. I'll click in that page and backspace until it goes away. Now we want this as a PDF. So I'm going to click File, Save As, and go to my folder, select PDF, and save. We'll close that. Go back to the folder. There it is. So now I will show you how to assemble all of this information into one document. Okay, so now we've just about got our uh, certificate pages complete. Uh, we've completed the photos page, the sketch page, and most of the uh, certificate page one. So all I have left to do here is put my certification here. If, if you are a COA, you will need to put that certification. Uh, the best place it would fit would be on the sketch page. There's not much room left um, on page one. You could put it above the certification here if there's enough room. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add an image. Okay, so I've inserted my stamp. Kind of make sure it's the, the right size. 1.25 inches to uh, 2 inches. And now I need to insert my stamp date. So I'll go ahead and do that. It's January 26, 2020. Okay, so this area here, uh, you have three options. Original corner, reestablished corner, existing corner type C. So this was based on original evidence. So I'll click here. Now if it's not original evidence, it's a perpetuated corner. Say it's a commonly accepted stone or rebar or fence post or something like that. You would select existing corner type C. Now if there was nothing remaining and it was say it was proportioned in and it was completely reset that would be a reestablished corner type C. So I'll put my name here. PS number 1815. And this is where I enter the survey date. So this is the date which I was out in the field and perform the field work. That was January 24th, 2022. Okay. Um, so this is a, a non-standard section, so I want to do something with this. So typically, if it's a northeast, uh, northwest, you'll just click um, you know, highlight which corner it is. So this one's a little bit different. Um, it's a very small fractional section. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of draw a line. Approximating that state line. Okay. 
and now I want to approximate where the milepost is. Well, let's try this one. Okay, that works. So I'm going to move that to about where the milepost is. Just kind of approximate that here. Okay. Might want to thicken that line up a little. Okay. All right. So that's nice and filled in. All right. I'm going to save that. So I'll need to <coughs> also put my signature here. Uh, before I do this, I'm going to have uh, another surveyor review this before I sign off on it uh, and record it. So now we're going to insert the photos page and the uh, original um, GLO record. So I'm going to go to insert. Back up here. So I'm inserting the photos page, which I have saved as a PDF. I'm going to insert that after page two. Looks good. Okay, there's my photos. So all that looks good. Now I'm going to insert the 1858 GLO notes and the 1877 GLO notes. So we'll go back to insert. Eighteen fifty-eight. Last page. Close. We're going to insert one more page. That is the eighteen seventy-seven notes. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of highlight the notes section. This one's very kind of already highlighted. Actually, I'll I'll leave that one alone. We'll come down here to uh, milepost ninety. Yeah, we'll do a rectangle. So here's the description of milepost 90. Oop. We'll uh, change this. No color. Thickness 2. Red line, okay. Okay, so that kind of kind of highlights the uh, last GLO record of milepost ninety. Go ahead and save. Okay, so at this point, I believe everything's together. So now. I want to have our uh, staff surveyor, Steve Martin, completely re review this document before I uh, sign off. Now that everything's completed, I'm going to give it a, a very thorough review uh, again and then have uh, our staff surveyor take a look at it and give a, a thorough second review before I sign off on it uh, for recording. And then I'll enter it into the database and it will go to the GLO map. So I hope this was, uh, was helpful, and uh, thank you for watching.